What's the reward? So the Mesilat Yesharim says there's two aspects of the reward in this world and the next world. The ultimate reward that a person uh, needs to and uh, aspire to get is to enjoy Ziva Shechina, to enjoy the beauty of the Shechina itself. What that means, we have no comprehension whatsoever because we're still limited with our flesh and body. But I'll give you an illustration of what joy means of enjoying the Shechina. Now, the Mesilat Yesharim, the Ramchal, says this is something you can enjoy in this world. Needless to say, in the next world. Whatever is in this world, magnified by infinity in the next world. So, imagine a person's life. Now, let's say this person lived a hundred years. Out of the hundred years, the reality is even if he was rich and successful and married with kids and even have some traumatizing life, the whole hundred years is not joy. If he lived like a regular human being, most likely 25 to 35 percent of his life he's sleeping. Sleeping. So out of a hundred years, you're already down to about 70 years or so. 70 years left. Out of the other 70 years, he's also spending some time going to the bathroom. Then he's also spending some time working. And work is not always fun. And he's also spending some time dealing with problems. And he's eating and he's drinking. Meaning, out of the whole 100 years, maybe, if you're lucky, you got a good solid 10, 15, maybe, maybe 17 years of actual fun. Let's say, I mean, I'm talking about a multi-billionaire, that money's never his problem. I'm talking about that. Best case scenario, maybe you got 17% fun. Good. In reality, it's more like 5%. But let's be generous here. Okay? So we got 17. Now, if you take all, all of that fun that he had in 17 years, you spread it out over 100 years, that's a life, right? But if you take all 17 years and you put it into, just give it to the, inject that fun into him one shot... Ooh, what? All the pleasure he ever had in his entire life, in one second, all the pleasure he had from food, all the pleasure he had from money, all the pleasure he had from, uh, from his wife, uh, all the pleasure he had from whatever he did, in one shot, it's a lot of pleasure, right? Okay. Now, you take all of that fun, that 17 years worth of fun, you put it in a little box. Then you take, do the same exact thing, For every single person that ever lived from the beginning of the world until the time of Mashiach. You take all of their fun that they all had. Right now you got almost 8 billion people. Previous generation about 6.5 billion. Previous generation about 6 billion. Previous generation about 5. And so on and so forth. You talk about billions and billions and billions of people. And all of their fun, and all of their, let's say, some had only one year of fun, some had 20 years of fun, some had more or less, but point is, everybody, just the fun part, no bad part. Take everything that they had, you put it in the same box. You put that into a nice, turn it into liquid, you give a guy an injection of that fun, that's a lot of fun, right? That's a lot of good, right? That is not even considered the down payment. That's not even considered the down payment. It's not even considered a moment of fun of enjoying the Ziva Shechina. Of enjoying the joy that you would get for protecting your Brit. Not even a moment of the reward that you will get for being a modest woman. Not even a moment of it. Not even a moment of the reward that you're going to get for keeping kosher for being kosher, for keeping Shabbat. It's not even a moment of it. Needless to say, all of the mitzvot that you did. So that's a lot of joy. Now, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, you're supposed to feel parts of this in this world too. How can you get to that? By serious, serious toiling of Torah. Getting yourself to become a holy person where you sanctify your body. 
I can't explain to you how that feels as far as you would understand it, but I can give you some type of an illustration. I hope none of you have ever done drugs, but I'm assuming everybody here knows somebody that did drugs at some point in their life. Now, when people do drugs, Baruch Hashem, I never did drugs, but I had medicine in my system at some points in my life when I was going through all the fun surgeries. Now, drugs, what do they do? They give you, they make you uh, feel a bunch of things that you really are not supposed to feel. All of a sudden, you feel great, even though nothing good's happening. Numb, buzzing, all types of things like this. People do drugs because they want to live in that perm- in that status of pretty much uh, illusion, and uh, their body body buzzing and, and doing all types of things, um, and a certain elevated uh, mind, a certain lightness to the brain, all types of things that feel like uh, you're in a different world. People do get addicted to drugs because of this, what they call a high. If a person seriously toils in Torah, and I don't mean toils in Torah for one day, and I don't mean toils for Torah for just an hour a day for 20 years. I'm talking about serious toil of Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu can give him some of this in his, this world where you could, for an X amount of time, it could be a minute, it could be a few hours, it could be every day, depends. The person can simply feel everything I just explained that all the drug addicts do times a million. Times a million. Just by existing. Now, the Chazonish writes that a really serious Tamit Chacham, a really serious holy person, could be a woman also. There are women in recent history, 40, 50, 60 years ago, that had Ruach HaKodesh. We're not talking about uh, a thousand years ago. Talk about in recent generations, grandparents, at Ruach HaKodesh, that felt like this on a regular basis. And the Chazoni says, these people look like men, these people look like women that are like among us. But in reality, they're angels among men. They're angels, not just by the way Shamaim, the way heaven perceives them, but the way themselves they feel. The way they feel. So a person can sanctify their body to the point of having physical pleasure. Physical pleasure from their mitzvot. They drink a little juice. They do a bracha. They get themselves to start feeling all types of things that you cannot explain with words. Because even all, even if I wrote a book about it, you still wouldn't understand. It's like trying to explain a blind person what the color, color blue is. He's never seen blue. How is he going to know? You're talking about it's like green. I don't know what green is either. So that's how much joy a person can have from a simple mitzvah of drinking uh, water, of eating something, of whatever it is. They can have that much joy. And that's just a small sample of of the real joy they will uh, they will get when they arrive at the real world that's eternal. But that's based on the assumption that the person has sanctified themselves. Not by their own opinion, but by Shemaim, by Kadosh Baruch Hu, testifying, she is holy, he is holy. There are many people doing mitzvot, not many are becoming holy. Holy means you have to be very, very uh, uh, protective of modesty and morality and things of that nature.